get in his presence. Get in his face. Hallelujah. Come on. We lift up the name of Jesus. We lift up the name of Jesus. We lift up the name of Jesus. Come on. Let your body be an instrument of praise. Let your body be an instrument of worship. Come on. Come on. Lift him up. Yes. Jesus. Hey, Jesus. Sit down your power. Sit down your grace. Sit down your mercy. Sit it down, Lord. Sit down healing. Hey, turn it around on today. Straighten it out on today. We come to see you. Hey, hey, take hey. Yeah, la, 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 la. Hey, Jesus, 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 come on, put those hands together. I don't know about you, but I came to see him on this morning. I came to go after him with all that I have. Hallelujah. He's seeking the worshipers. He's seeking the praises. Hallelujah. Come on, can he find you on today? Can he count on you on today? Hey, shoot. No matter what's going on, you got to give him praise. No matter what's going on, you got to worship him. Come on. Don't let the rocks cry out for you. Woo. Don't let the rocks cry out. Come on, it's about him on this morning. Hey, Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. Come on and give God the glory on today. Come on and lift up your voices. Come on, she said, if you won't cry out, the rocks will. Come on and give God your praise. Come on and give God the fruit of your lips. He's worthy of it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, give him what's due. Come on, this is the day that the Lord has made us. Come on, we want the glory to rise in this place. Come on, anybody want the glory to arise among us? Come on and lift up your hands and your voices in this place. Hallelujah, Jesus. We come to give you glory, Jesus. Yeah. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Yes, God. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the joy of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Come on, every voice, lift it up. Sing, oh, 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 let it rise. Yes, God. Sing, oh. Come on, put those hands together in this place. Come on, give God your best praise on this morning. Let the glory of the glory of the Lord let it rise, rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Come on. Let the glory of let the glory of the Lord let it rise among us. Let the glory let it rise among us. Let the praises of the Lord let it rise. Come on, lift your voices up and say, Oh, let it rise. Say, Come on. Let the voice see you. Come on, everybody, lift your voice up. Let it rise. Say, 
let it ride. Come on, clap those hands. I'll give people we give God to do that. Let the glory of let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of let the glory of the Lord let it rise among us. Let the praise of let the praise of our King let it rise among us. Let it rise. Let the songs of let the song of the Lord let it rise among us. Let the song of the Lord let it rise among us. Let the joy of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Come on, see you. Come on, let it rise. Come on. Lift your voices up, see you. Oh, 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 oh. Come on, lift your voices, say, let it ride. Come on, clap those hands. Come on, give God some praise in this place. Come on, one more time, let the glory up. Let it rise among us. Let the glory up. Let it rise among us. Let the praises of our King. Come on, let it rise. Say. Come on, say. Let the praises of the Lord say. Let it rise among us. Let the praises of the Lord. Let it rise among us. Let the joy of our King. Come on, let it rise. Come on, lift your voices up, all you people, we say yo. Say yo, say yo. Say yo. Come on, say yo. We lift our voices and say yo. Come on, we say yo. Come on and clap those hands to the King. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let the praises of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of the Lord rise among us. Hallelujah, Jesus. We give you honor, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Good morning, Epicenter Church family. Amen. We welcome you out this morning to our early morning inspirational service here at the Epicenter Church where the glory of the Lord surely arises among us. Hallelujah. Why don't you get out of your seat at this time and greet your neighbor and let him know how, you ex how excited you are to see him in the house of the Lord on this morning. Amen. We want to welcome our live viewers on this morning. Thank you for tuning in with us at this time. Hallelujah. We are excited to have you in our service. We give you permission to raise your hand, to clap your hands, to give God glory where you are at this time. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. As you make your way back to your seat, I want to read before you're hearing the 150th division of Psalms, starting at verse number one. And it reads, praise ye the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the temporal and dance. Praise him with the string instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. And verse number six said, let everything that had breath praise be the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, let's put that together right now. Let everything that had breath 
praise ye the Lord. Pray with me at this time. God, we love you. We bless you. We honor you. We are excited to be in your presence. Lord, we give you permission, Lord, to have your way in this place. God, do what only you can do, oh God. Lord God, we come to give you praise. We come to give you honor. We come to bless your name. Have your way amongst your people, and we will forever give you all the glory in Jesus' name as I turn it back over to the MD. Hallelujah. Come on, clap those hands in this place. Hallelujah. She was saying, and with everything that is in you, give God praise. Hallelujah. Come on. We know that we are instruments of praise on this morning. So if you will, come on and get involved on this morning. Come on, clap those hands. Come on, clap your hands like this. Come on, lift it up. Come on. Great and mighty are you, Lord, forever we will sing. Great and mighty are you, Lord, our great and master's king. Great and mighty are you, Lord, forever we will sing. Great and mighty are you, Lord, our great and master's king. Say. Great and mighty are you, Lord, forever we will hey. sing. Great and mighty are you, Lord, our great and master's king. Great and mighty are you, Lord, forever we will sing. Come on, sing. you know it, lift it up with us. Come on, say. The King of all, King of all kings, Lord, Lord of all Lord. We worship you, we worship you with one accord, with one accord. Agent of days, Agent of days, Lamb who was slain, Lamb who was slain, Your kingdom reign, Your kingdom reign. How long, say? Come on, clap to his hands. Yeah. Come on, get those hands high in this place. Yeah, yeah. Come on, back to the top. Say, great and mighty, say. Great and mighty are you, Lord. Forever we will sing. Great and mighty are you, Lord. Our great and mighty. Say, great and mighty. Great and mighty are you, Lord. Forever we will sing. Great and mighty are you, Lord. Come on, say, King of
and all the glory. The song says you deserve it. Hallelujah. When we think about the goodness of the Lord, you can say, look, my soul says hallelujah. My soul says hallelujah. And Lord, you deserve all the praise. You deserve all the glory. You deserve all the honor. Everything I have belongs to you. Hallelujah. Everything I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, it's all because of you. He's so deserving. Even when we're not deserving, God is deserving. God is deserving of the fruit of your lips, of the worship of your heart, the surrender of your soul. God deserves it. Oh, hallelujah. Such an awesome God. Such an awesome God. Such an awesome God. He is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're worthy, God. You're worthy, God. You're worthy. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You're worthy. Oh. Jesus. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. Can you tell God that this morning? Mm, my hallelujah belongs to you. You're so worthy, God. My hallelujah belongs to you. Can you say you deserve it? You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. Y'all sounding good, yes. You deserve it. My hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah. Hallelujah belongs to you. Nobody else gets my hallelujah but you, God. Hallelujah. Yes. 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 I surrender all. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. Because you deserve it. Yes. You deserve it. Deserve the glory, God. All the praise belongs to you. you. Yeah. It. it all belongs to you. you all of the glory, all of the glory belongs to you. All of the glory belongs to you. All of the glory belongs to. You are Alpha and Omega. The glory belongs to you, God. All of the glory you do great things. To you do marvelous you. things. Your greatness is unsearchable, oh God. Yeah. All of the glory belongs to you. You deserve it, yes. You deserve it. You deserve it. Yes. yes, my hallelujah 
belongs to you. Woo. My hallelujah belongs to you. Can you sing that with me? Let's just hear the voices. My hallelujah, my hallelujah, it belongs to you. You are the center of my joy. Yeah. Hallelujah. Belong, 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 belong to you. Belong to you. Belong to you. Belong to you. Oh God. My hallelujah. Belong to you. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands. Hey. My hallelujah belongs to you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. On yesterday, I had an, an opportunity to travel out of state to preach. And I preached at this particular place before. And I already knew what to expect. I thought I did. Amen. And as I was traveling and going to the hotel, I already had an expectation of the hotel. I had a certain, you know, mindset of what type of hotel it was. It was not one of my choice. Amen. But I was grateful to be invited to speak the word of the Lord. But as I arrived to the hotel and I began to get out my luggage, begin to get out the things that I had in the car. And I went up to the, uh, the, the second floor to get to my room. And I opened up the door. And when I opened up the door... The hotel had a brand new makeover. And as soon as I walked in, the Lord said, same vessel, new upgrade. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of y'all people think they expecting something of you. But guess what? Something took place while you were sleeping. Something took place in the midst of your transition. Something took place and people expecting you to be the same way. But I'm here to tell you, same vessel, but new upgrade. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. Turn it to your neighbor. Throw away your expectations of what you thought I was. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Some of you came expecting the same service. Hallelujah. But I'm here to tell you, same church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Different move of God. Hallelujah. Come on. Who in expectation all this morning? Hey, Jesus. Hey. Do something new, Lord. Hey. Do something new. Where my enemies can't track me. Where my enemies can't understand. Hallelujah. Same vessel. New upgrade. Come on. Put your hand on your same vessel. New upgrade. Come on. Same person. New upgrade. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hey. He's in this place. He's in this place. Can I tell you when I walked in that room, they had new floors. I began to take my socks out my bag. They had some wooden floors. They used to have carpet. And I began to slide on that floor. <laughs> I said, this floor looks good. But it was the same place. New upgrade. You better catch that. You better catch that. Find somebody and say, same vessel. Come on, come on. Oh, you're not talking to the right person. Get out of your seat and say, same vessel. New upgrade. Woo. Hey, Jesus. Hey! Hey! Woo! 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 I feel that! Hallelujah! Woo! Hey! Hey! Hallelujah! Woo! Come on, God's gonna do something in this place! He's gonna do something with you in this place! Woo! Come on, come on! Fresh wind! Fresh fire, fresh wind, 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 
fresh fire. Come on, put those hands together. Fresh fire, fresh wind, 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 fresh fire. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You already decreed it. You already declared it. Hallelujah. Why don't you go ahead and open up your mouth and say that one more time. Fresh wind. Fresh, fresh fire. Wind. Fresh fire. Fresh wind. Fresh fire. Fresh wind. Fresh fire. Fresh wind. Hallelujah. Fresh Glory fire. be to God. It's nothing like running a race. And when you think you're tired, hallelujah, the fire that you feed up under your feet is already under your feet. It's nothing like running a race. And when you think you're tired, you get your second win. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. With that being said, it's seed so in time in the house of God. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. If you need God to blow a fresh wind on your body, if you need God to blow a fresh wind on your finances, if you need God to blow a fresh wind on your mind, keep going ahead and shouting it. Fresh wind, fresh fire, fresh wind, fresh fire, fresh wind, fresh fire. Hallelujah. If you desire to give, please raise your hands. Hallelujah. And our professional ministry technicians will be elated to serve you at this time. If you're making our checks, we ask that you will make all checks payable to the epicenter. That is E-P-I-C-E-N-T-E-R. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I want you to keep that same vein of enthusiasm. Hallelujah. With fresh wind and fresh fire. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Fresh wind, fresh fire. Hallelujah. If you are visiting us for the very first time, let me unapologetically welcome you to the Ethics Center. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We get excited about giving because we know that giving is part of how the kingdom operates. We get excited about kingdom because we know that we have the opportunity and the power to finance the gospel. We get excited about about kingdom. We get excited about giving because if you knew what your seed could do, the seed that you have in your hand will be exactly what prophet is decreed and declared. It could be the very thing that will cause you to get your upgrade. Hallelujah. Are you all excited to give this morning? Hallelujah. If you desire to give electronically, we invite you to text the number 601 202 4365. Again, that number is 601 202 4365. You can type the word I tithe or you can type the word I give. If you're joining us via the web, via social media, welcome to the early morning epicenter glory experience. Amen. Glory be to God. New location, same glory. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We invite you to text the number 601 202 4365 to all of our first time visitors. Again, we want to welcome you on behalf of Bishop Lionel Joseph Trailer and Prophetess LaShawn Trailer. We would like to welcome you to the Epic Center. We believe that you're not here by chance nor by accident, but we believe and know that it is God's divine plan that you are here worshiping with us on this morning. By now, when you enter into the sanctuary, you may have received a guest information card. We simply ask that you will complete that card in its entirety. It's going to tell us a little bit about who you are, where you come from. If you did not get that card, we want to invite you to text the number 601 202 4365, simply type the word visitor because we want to add our faith to your faith to concerning that which you believe in God for. We are praying church. Amen. Glory be to God. For the rest of you all, and as you're getting your tithes and offerings together, I'd like to go ahead and build your faith up. In Luke chapter 7, there's a story about Jesus and the centurion servant. The verse 7 and verse 1 says, and when he had completed his discourse in the hearing of the people, he went to Capernaum. In verse 4, when they came to Jesus, they earnestly implored him, saying, He is worthy of you that you should grant this. Now, the centurion had asked Jesus to heal his servant. What was amazing to me is that in verse 5, the people said to Jesus, For he loves our nation, and he is one who has helped us 
build our synagogue. Now, most people would tell you that this man had great faith and he had great faith. But my question was always, what made Jesus or what got Jesus' attention? And when they said that he had this man, this centurion, had helped Jesus or helped the people build the synagogue. In other words, he helped to fund the gospel. He helped to fund the kingdom and the message of Jesus Christ. And we have the opportunity to do the same thing right now. As a result, because this man gave to the people, because he helped to build the synagogue, Jesus said, coupled with his faith, his giving, coupled with his faith, Jesus healed his servant. Prophet has said it earlier, upgrade. My question to you is, what in your life do you need to be healed? Are you all ready to give? Hallelujah. This seed is going to allow whatever it is that you need to be healed, healed. Hallelujah. This is your upgrade. Go ahead and shout, this is my upgrade. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Stand with me to your feet. Hallelujah. As we come all around and give into the kingdom on this morning. Glory be to God. Turn to your right. Hallelujah. Turn to your right. And my left and our professional ministry technicians will escort you down. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. If you can, hallelujah, as others are making their way around, if you can, please remain standing. Hallelujah. As we honor the Lord in our giving, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you right now for the opportunity to sow into the good ground of the epicenter. Father, we believe you for a tremendous harvest, not only for our needs, but for the needs of others. Ministering angels, we command you to go forth now. Cause a return to come back unto us. Father God, we decree and we declare right now that prosperity is coming from the north, the south, the east, and the west. We decree and declare right now that every single one of our needs are met as a result of us operating out of the principle of in sowing and investing into the kingdom. Why don't you go ahead and point to your seed and shout this with me. Shout, my seed, my seed. is unstoppable. My seed, my seed is unstoppable. Go ahead and make your prophetic declaration income, increase, inheritance, inheritance. One more time, income, increase, inheritance. In Jesus' name, send it with a praise as I turn you over to our EMD. Glory be to God. Anybody come to give God high praise this morning? Hallelujah. I said anybody come to give God high praise this morning? Glory. Woo! Hallelujah. 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 Come on, put your hands together. The Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. And there's glory above the nations. And there's glory above the nations. The Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. And there's glory above the nations. And there's glory above the nations. The Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. And there's glory above the nations. And there's glory above the nations. The Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. And there's glory above the nations. And there's glory above the nations. Give God the highest praise, acknowledging Him always, and all the people say Halle, 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 say Halle, 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 The Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens, and the glory above the nations. And the glory above the nations. The Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens, and the glory above the nations. And the glory above the nations. Lord is high above the heaven, and the glory above the nation, and the glory above the heaven. Well, the Lord is high above the heaven, the Lord is high above the heaven, and the glory above the nation, and 
glory of all the nations. Give God the highest praise and all of the human ways. And all the people say, Halle, Halle, Halle. Halle, Halle, Halle. Say, Halle, Halle, Halle. Halle, Halle, Halle. just slide in the middle just a little bit. We got more that's coming for the word. So if there's a seat right next to you, I want you to make sure that you make room, hallelujah, for somebody that's coming in that's ready to get ready, to get ready, to get ready, to get this word that you're getting ready to get. Without further ado, I'd like to present to some and introduce to others, none other than the angel of this house, Bishop Lionel Joseph Trailer. Hallelujah. Give Jesus Christ a great hand clap of praise this morning. Come on. Give Jesus Christ a great hand clap of praise this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give him, give him a praise. Give him a praise. Give him a praise. He's an awesome God this morning. Amen. Praise God. Shake two or three people a hand. Tell them I'm glad to see you in the house of the Lord. If you hadn't had a chance to greet somebody, greet somebody who you didn't have a chance to greet. Tom, I'm glad to see you in the house of the Lord on this morning. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. Help me celebrate my beautiful wife, Prophetess Trailer, on this morning. Glory be to God for the woman of God. Thank God for all the ministers of the house, Minister Anderson, all the ministers scattered through the house. Thank God for the music ministry putting their work. Amen. Come on, lift your hands all over the house. Lord, we magnify your name. Oh, Lord, we magnify your name. Oh, Lord, Lord, we magnify your name. Oh, Your name. 
And for your name is great. For your name is great. And you're greatly to be praised. And greatly to be praised. Hey, for your name is great. Yes, your name is great. And you're greatly to be praised. And great. Say it again, Lord, we magnify your name. Come on, all over the house. Lord, we magnify your name. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. We magnify your name. We magnify your name. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Lord, we magnify your name. One more verse of it. I'm going to get ready to go to this word. Come on. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Lord, we lift your name on high. On high. We lift your name on high. On high. Lord, we lift your name on high. On high, we lift your name on high. On high, for your name is great. Yes, for your name is great. And you're greatly to be praised. And greatly to be praised. Your name is great. Your name is great. And you're greatly to be praised. Give me a little volume up here for me. It's by the Lord's mercies will not consume. His compassion fill not. His mercies are new every morning. Surely the house of God can say, Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord, unto me. The Lord is good. I say, The Lord is good. Hallelujah. His mercy endureth forever. We're going to get ready to go to the word of the Lord. I got a word this morning. I got a word this morning. And this word may not be for everybody, but I know the word of the Lord is for somebody. Amen. The word of the Lord is for somebody. And when it's your word, we call it specific. We call that rhema. When that word jump off the pages and it's just for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask that everyone who can stand, stand. If you got good knees, come on, stand on them. If that trick knee will let you stand for a little while, come on, tell that trick that knee. Tell them we're going to stand up, trick knee. To all of our guests, welcome to the Epicenter Church. Amen. The West location, we thank God for this location. We shifted over here for the summer, but we'll be back in headquarters soon. Amen. Amen. Praise God. But we thank God for more than one house. Amen. Praise God. I'm going to go ahead and put a plug in. We're going to have good church tonight too. Amen. Prophetess Triller will be preaching the word on tonight. Amen. Praise God. So I'm looking forward to having awesome, awesome church. If you got good sense, you'll make it back here tonight. We don't know what God going to do. I feel like it's going to be explosive. Hallelujah. Praise God. 
Mm, I thank God for all of the leadership of this house. I thank God for all of you. Amen. Once again, to all of our visitors, everyone who's viewing by live stream, welcome to the Epicenter Church. Uh, let me just go where I'm going. There was a prophetic declaration that was made in the month of June uh, that there will be new power and there will be new glory. The same time that prophetic declaration came from our prophetess that June would be a month of testing. Ooh. It almost seemed to be contradictory. But there is no contradictions in God. For God told me the only way you can get new power and new glory is through being tested. Oh, glory be to God. I started to preach a message this morning. I started to preach heat wave. Glory be to God. Amen. I started to preach heat wave. But God had me go here this morning. Job, the first chapter. Job 1. Familiar passage of scripture. That's why I'm going there. Amen. I seem like y'all going to let me teach a little bit. Amen. So I'm going to just do what the Holy Ghost say do. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Job 1. It's a blessing to see the wares in the house. Amen. Praise God. It's been as Cassandra, good people there. That's her father and mother. Thank God for them. Amen. Job 1. If you have it, say loudly, amen. amen. Glory be to God. Verse number. I see this man. I can't. Listen, there's certain folk that just can't hide. Whoever this man of God is right here, lift your hands right there. In that suit right there. I, I don't, y'all don't even know who you is, but there's something, there's something special about you. Something that's us fresh anointing on you. I, some folk just can't hide, and there's some oil on him that's not letting him hide, y'all. So I don't know who he is. I might need to know him who he is when it's all over. Amen. But there's some fresh oil on him. You know how some folk can't hide in the stuff. You try and sit around, sit in the back, and try and hide. Amen. But they got something special on him. I don't know who he is, but he can't hide. Glory be to God. You know that oil? You know, you... Praise God. Amen. Some folk can't hide. You know how it is. Job 1, verse number 1, if you have it, say loudly, amen. amen. Say, there was a man in the land of us. Say us. Mm-hmm. Whose name was Job. And, and that man was perfect and upright and one who feared God and what? issued evil verse number six go to verse number six real quick it says now there was a day when the sons of god came to present themselves before the lord and satan came among them and the lord said satan whence comest thou where you come from then satan answered the lord and said from going look he gave him specifics from going to and fro where and from doing what walking up and down what in it and the lord said unto him has thou considered my servant job it's not always a good thing when you feel like you're being considered. God is not, you don't always feel good when God considers you. And there is none like him in the earth. He's perfect. He's upright. One that feared God and issued evil. Then Satan answered the Lord, the Job feared God for not, has thou not made what? God has made not what? an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he had on every side and had blessed the works of his hands and substance is increased in the land but put forth thine hand now touch what all that he had and he will curse thee to thy face and the Lord said unto Satan behold all that he had say all that he had had. say it again all that he had had. is in thy power Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. I want to preach from this topic on this morning. I can feel there's a sober anointing on this house. I want to preach, teach from this topic on this morning, Brother Doug. Amen. Removing the hedge. Removing the hedge. Ask your neighbor this. What do you do when God moves against you? Ask somebody else, what do you do when God moves against you? Oh, I know, yeah, that that, that went out of some folk theology in this happy-go-lucky generation, but we have to teach the balance. 
I know God is for me. But what happens when God moves against you? Oh, y'all don't want to preach that this morning. <laughs> Father, your word is already blessed. Give me the tongue of the learned, the ability to speak, and wisdom to convey it in such a manner that it's edifying. In Jesus' name we pray. The church say amen. Amen. You may have your seat. Somebody say, don't remove the hedge. Say it again. Don't remove the hedge. The word hedge, by definition, is a fence. Or a boundary. Oftentimes in our common everyday understanding, it is the hedges around the house or the hedge around the, uh, the facility is made of growing bushes or shrubs. Say hedge. hedge. Say hedge. hedge. But by, by mere definition, a hedge is a fence. It is a gate. It is a defense. It is a boundary. It is set up to keep something on one side and something else on the other. Say hedge. Yes. Now, now Job, Job was a man from the land of Uz. Uz or, or literally means a fortified place. Job was a man of a, from a fortified place. The name Uz also means to be stout. It also means to be prevailing. Say prevailing. Yes. Job was a place where he always won. Prevailing. Job was from a place where he always won. Job was from a defense placed. Job was from a fortified place, a solitary place. If you look it up, it meant, it meant a prevailing place. It was such a strong place. It was a, a place of strength. Job was from a place of strength. Job didn't know weakness. Job didn't understand feebleness. Job had not seen struggle, at least from the text. Job don't see struggle. Job is from a place of prevailing. I don't know about nobody else. Amen. I've lived now to a point where my mantra is, all I do is win. Yo, y'all quiet now. See, that's my mantra now, minister. Amen. All I do is win. That's my mantra now. But I can't say I'm from a place of us. Because I have not always been where I am today. I can't say that I've never known what it is to lose a battle. I do know what it is to lose. But I've, I've switched that thing up on the devil to where I say I don't have any losses. All I have is lessons. But I know what it's like. I know what it's like to be from a place where you don't feel so strong. You don't feel so sure. You don't feel so assertive. I, I know what it does not feel to be astute. And to sit at a table and don't feel like you belong there. Feel like if I open my mouth, it's going to be revealed that I don't belong here. But Job was from a place where he was astute, where he was stout, where he was prevailing. So Job was from a place of victory. Y'all quiet. Job came from a place of strength. Job came from a place. And because of that, the Bible also says, watch this, it gives his character. It says that he was a man that was perfect. Say perfect. perfect. That word perfect, that means not only good character, but it doesn't mean without flaw. But, it, but in this sense, it means as good as you can possibly be. Job, Job was as good as you can get as a man. Huh? Job was upright. Say upright. upright. It meant right-minded or he was minding the right things. Think upon these things that are lovely, pure, true. Job was only minding what was right. If you'd have brought Job some mess, Job would say, ain't right. I ain't talking about that. That ain't right. Huh? He wanted to be as good as he could be. He was upright. Listen, watch this. One who feared God or he reverenced God. Not that he was scared of him, but he reverenced him. And watch this. He issued evil. Say issued. That word issue, that means he abstained from evil. He abhorred evil. He didn't want to be in evil. Now, I know what Paul says, no matter where I go, evil is always present. Why? Because there's no good thing in me. But just because I got evil in me don't mean I like it. 
the evil that I do, I wish I wouldn't do. Oh, wretched man that I am. Who can deliver me from this body of this? This thing is killing me and I can't get rid of it. Job hated the evil that was in him. Hated the evil that's in others. You can hate the sinner. You can hate the sin without hating the sinner. The Bible begins to give this description of this man, then begins to talk about the day or, or, or the day that the sons of God came to gather themselves before God. It was a day where men would come to offer sacrifice, like a day like today. Came for praise and worship, came to lift up God. These men or the sons of God were leaders of their home. There was no Levitical priesthood at the time. Stick with me, I'm going to bless you. There was no Levitical priesthood at the time. So every man was a priest for his own home. Every man was a prophet for his own home. In this day, it still should be said. Pastor is the pastor of this church. You the pastor of your church. Oh, come on. Glory to God. Everything in the Trotter home should be submitted to Pastor Trotter. Y'all quiet. Huh? You ordained to be the leader of the Hampton home. Are y'all with me today? So Job would make sacrifices, the Bible say, every day because his children wasn't living right. Isn't that amazing? You could be living perfect and your children not living. Y'all quiet now. Huh? Y'all know it's the truth because if it wasn't for some of our grandmamas, we wouldn't have made it in anyway. Wasn't for a praying grandma. If your daddy wasn't living nothing, you wouldn't know how to live nothing. Huh? We got in by the prayers the sacrifices of, of, that our parents and our forefathers made. Can you say amen? amen? So in praise and worship, this is what gets me. Now, let me preach a little bit. This is what gets me, Sister Will. In praise and worship, the devil showed up. While sacrifices were being made, that means there was an altar present. And there were, and there were prayer for repentance. That means deliverance was going forth. You mean to tell me why there was an altar, why there was sacrifice, why there was deliverance, and a perfect man who was minding his own business, Satan still showed up. You thought you had to be in all evil for the devil to show up. Uh-uh. And that the devil is not even attracted to all evil. He's attracted to your perfection. He's attracted to your worship. Y'all quiet. He's attracted that because you got a mind to try and do right. No, the Bible didn't say he was perfect. Say he was being as perfect as he could be. He was minding the right things. He was hating even the evil in himself. And he is getting up going to church. Doing what he knows to do. Worshiping God like he know to worship God. He wasn't in the club. He was y'all quiet. He wasn't out there doing. He was doing all he knew to do. The devil didn't catch him at the club. The devil caught him at church. Sometimes doing all you know to do is still not enough to stop him from doing what he's going to do. In fact, what's going to cause him to do what he's going to do is that you continue doing what you keep doing. Keep minding the right thing. Keep on putting sacrifices on the altar. Then all of a sudden the devil shows up after you. Can I be honest with you? You wouldn't even have a conversation about the devil if you wasn't trying to live right. The whole time I was living wrong, the devil never crossed my mind. But ever since I've been living right, he keep crossing my path. Y'all won't preach with me. I said the entire time I was living wrong, Satan never even came up in the conversation. But ever since I've been striving to try and do it right, I can't keep that devil out of my conversation. And one of the reasons you can't keep the devil out of your conversation is because hell won't stop talking about you. Joe wasn't talking about the devil, and the devil was talking about him. Y'all won't preach me. I said one of the reasons you can't keep hell out of your conversation, because hell can't keep you out of his conversation. When you're trying to do right. When you're trying to do right. And you know what's the blessing? The blessing is, 
why you're doing right or, in the, or attempting to do right and when you're making praise and worship and you're serving God with everything you know to serve God with. It is a, it's a blessing to know that the angels of the Lord encamp around about them that fear him. Bible said Job feared the Lord. There's angels always around those that fear God, that reverence God, that love God, that's, that's pursuing God. Hey Amen. Thank God I got angels watching over me. That's what one songwriter say. Hey Amen. They're watching over me night and day. Angels, y'all quiet now. They were there, hey amen, from the beginning. They, they encamp all around me. And I'm grateful for my angels. Amen. Only, only eternity will reveal what could have been had I not had my angels. Ooh, me and my son, let me just put this in. Me and my son was on our way to church today. Amen. And I'm, I'm really not that far from this, neither location. Amen. I'm like a hop, skip, and a jump, five-minute drive from either location. And I was literally up the street from this church. I'm in route to come and preach. Amen. And this morning could have been a very hazardous morning. Because while I'm driving up Greenway, a young man in a green truck who was not paying attention to what he was doing, he veered all the way in our lane and was driving at me head on. And good thing I'm paying attention to the road because he had his head completely down. I don't know if he was on his phone. I don't know if he was asleep. Y'all quiet now. Amen. But if I had taken my eyes off the road for just a second, amen, we wouldn't have been having church this morning. We would have been in mourning. Y'all quiet because he was full speed coming up the road. And I honked my horn, and at the last minute, he pulled over. The angels of the Lord. I said the angels of the Lord. Because y'all do know that Satan come to kill. No, I'm going to hold that one right there because we, we jump to steal and destroy. But I say he comes to kill. I know he comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but he comes to kill. Y'all quiet. That's why in this conversation that God is having with Satan, he has to tell him on more than one occasion, don't you touch his body. Don't you kill him. Don't you kill him. Don't you. Why do you think he has to continue to reiterate to Satan, don't you kill him. Don't you kill him. Uh-uh. Because at the end of the day, amen, the devil want more than your testimony. He wants you off of the face of the earth. He wants you dead and gone. He wants you out of here. Why? Because as long as you live it, as long as you breathe and there's hope for you, there's hope for your family. There's hope for your children. Amen. There's hope for your no. He needs you gone. He wants you dead. Literally. He wants you literally gone. As long as you hear you're a symbol of hope. You're a symbol of what God can do. Maybe you can walk in on crutches and still give somebody hope. You can come in in a wheelchair and still give somebody hope. He wants you dead. I feel like preaching this morning. Give me, no, no, the Bible says, he says, where are you coming from? And this jumped out at me. Because when I went to get the definition of the word Job, watch this. The name Job literally means wherever you're from, wherever you're going, whoever you are. So Job is, Job is a sign of people that's in covenant. That God is with you wherever you go, wherever you are, whoever you are. So who was Satan looking for? He was looking for covenant people, wherever they are, whoever they are. Y'all quiet now, because he said, I'm walking, going to and fro in the earth. Y'all quiet now. And I'm walking up and down in the earth. What you think he looking for? Whoever he can find. Wherever he can find them. Whoever they are. He says, so you've considered my servant Job? Because Job is blessed wherever he is. Job is blessed wherever he go. And wherever Job go, people know who he is. Y'all, y'all miss it. How you know that? How you know that? Because the Bible says he's ble- his house is blessed and he's blessed on every side and he's blessed the works of his hands and his substance has increased in the land. 
So God, watch this. So God says to Satan, have you considered him? Have you considered him? If you've been everywhere, if you've been up and down, surely you know who he is. I know you know who he is. I know you know who he is. You can't be blessed and the devil not know who you are. You can't be a worshiper and the devil not know who you are. You can't be a, a person making sacrifice and the devil not know who you are. Amen. Now, baby, you've been really looking for somebody to, to wreak havoc and hell on. I know you already seen him. And, and the Satan didn't even deny it. Watch this. Satan said, I know who he is. And I also know you have a hedge. Y'all going to let me preach this morning? You also have a hedge around him. Say hedge. You have boundaries. You're protecting him. You're keeping him. There's angels around him that won't let me get to him. Oh, and you have hey, you have a hedge not just around him, but around everything that pertains to him. His children, blessing, don't even deserve it. They living under his hedge. Y'all quiet now. Give me a little bit more. I say they're living under his hedge. There's servants that's connected to you. They ain't even living nothing, but they're blessed because they work for you. There's folk that's in partnership with you. Amen. You're keeping the favor of God on their life. They ain't even living nothing. But just because they're connected to you, y'all quiet. When money come to you, money come to them. And they smart enough to know I ain't living nothing, but I'm going to stay connected to Job. Y'all quiet now. Amen. I ain't got nothing. That, there's, a, there's an anointing on Job that wherever Job go, money follow Job. Wherever Job go, favor follow Job. Wherever Job go, blessing follow Job. I, I might be crazy, but I ain't stupid. I'm sticking with Job. God said, go ahead. I know what you want. Watch this. God said, go ahead. I know what you want. And God removes, boy, I'm about to preach it. God removed the hedge. Now, I, can I be honest with you? I got a problem with that. Because Job was living right. Job was not in sin. Job was actually striving to be all that he can be with his whole house, with everything he had. And God says, I know you're considering him. Go ahead and touch him. I'm going to move this hedge. What do you do when God moves the hedge? How do I know if, if it's just simple testing of God moved the hedge? How, how do I know if this is just if this is just me reaping what I'm sowed or if this is God moving the hedge? I got to know it because see some of us, amen, June, June kicked in your front door and ain't let you go yet. Here you are 30 days in. Y'all quiet now. Hey, Sha. Mandomoho, Sha. What was the hedge in by God? What was hedged in by God that belonged to Job, say his house? The hedge was around his house, which is his family, and all those living in his habitation. They were hedged in. Two, all the houses in the land connected to him was hedged in. That represents extended family. That represents property, ownership, real estate. All that was on every side of Job. Land, everything that was connected to him was hedged in. Two, Business was hedged in. The Bible said the blessed works of his hands. His business was hedged in. All of us ain't that smart. All of us ain't that wonderful. You ain't that much more educated than somebody who's sleeping under the bridge today. Amen. But favor and opportunity has blessed. God has blessed the world. That's why I always pray that prayer in this church. I say, God, bless the works of my hands. Folk want to be blessed without working. No, I want to work and I want God to bless what I'm working on. What's the difference between your business and their business? What's the difference between Coca-Cola and Pepsi? McDonald's and Burger King. That might be a bad analogy. What a bad example. Amen. But, but the reality is, the only difference, the only thing may be, 
is that somebody got blessed. Oh, watch this. And the other thing that was, the other thing that was hedged in that we may not even be considering was his wealth and resources. The Bible says, and his substance is increased in the land. That word substance there represents all of his wealth and resources, which include money and influence. Now, now, when, when the devil began to attack, let's go just a little bit longer. Can y'all stick around for the word? Amen. Amen. I don't want to just hype you up. I want to help you out. In Job 1, once God moved the hedge, once God removed the hedge, this was some of us at today. This is what the first thing the enemy did. Job 1.13, it says, And there was a day when the sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their elder brother's house. The older brother had his own house. And there came a message unto Job and said what? The oxen were plowing. The asses feeding beside them and the Sabines, which represented an Arabian tribe, fell upon them and took them away. And they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I and I alone have escaped to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came another one said, the fire of God is fallen from heaven and had burnt up the sheep and the servants and consumed them. And I and only I alone have escaped while he was yet speaking. There came another and said, the Chaldeans came, made out of three bands, fell upon the camels and have carried them away and slain the servants. The first three, now listen to me, this is spiritual warfare. How I know it's spiritual warfare? Because it started with a conversation between the spirits, God and the devil. And this was about Job's spiritual or moral character. Some of us think spiritual warfare is just see my tie, tie my tie. Go to my hasa. Shete de bohoko. That's the only thing we think is spiritual warfare. But the devil said, I want Job's soul. And the first thing he went after was Job's money. Y'all quiet now. Y'all quiet now. Uh, now. Now I know it may go over some sister head, but to a brother it's hard to be spiritual when you're broke. It's hard to feel like a man of God and I ain't got no money, God. Hard to feel like a man. Are you listening to me? Especially when I've been straight. I've been straight, you heard me? I've been straight and then all of a sudden, everything I've worked for begins to fall apart. Now, I'm showing you this is spiritual warfare. You know, I'm going to prove to you this spiritual warfare. The first thing he went after was the oxen that was plowing. Oh, let me teach. If I have no oxen, I have nothing to break up the ground for me to sow seed. If I can't sow seed, you just eliminated my harvest. Y'all quiet now. The devil was not just at y'all. He trying to break me down. He goes straight to the source that gives me my resource. He went after the oxen. So even if I got seed, I can't plan it. I ain't got nothing working for me. Breaks up the oxen. The second thing he went after were the sheep. If I have no sheep, I have no sacrifice. Are y'all listening to me? This is after spiritual warfare because he know if I have no sacrifice, I can't keep a blessing over my house. Job made sacrifices for his children every day. But if I have no sheep, I have no sacrifice. I have nothing to bring with me to the house of God. That also means that the priest can't eat. Y'all quiet. And if we have no, oh, y'all won't pre- If we have no sheep, we have no house. We have no house. Then how am I going to worship? He after my seed. He's after my harvest. He's after my sacrifice. He's after my worship. Or oh, you're listening to me. Then the Bible said, and then the fire came from heaven. In other words, now, now, amen, praise God. He's burning up and burning down everything that pertains to me. Watch this. You go back and continue to read. The Bible says, then his sons and his daughters, say sons and daughters. His sons and his daughters were all in the same house partying. Huh? 
while, while their daddy going bankrupt, they partying. They don't even realize what's happening. They're so spiritually disconnected, they don't even know they're in spiritual warfare. So you think that you're just going broke. You don't realize you're in spiritual warfare. You think you just lost your job. You don't realize you're in spiritual warfare. You think you just lost a couple of clients. You don't realize you're in spiritual warfare. Y'all quiet now because the devil knows, amen, that if he's going to break your soul, first thing he wants to do is break your pockets, to break your commitment, to break your ability to reproduce, to break your ability to be a blessing to the house of God, to break your ability to provide for your children, to break your ability. Are you listening to me? Especially when you come from a place of strength. Job ain't used to begging. Job don't know what it is to be without. Are you listening to me? But the Bible said, wow, I feel like teaching. Wow, this is going on. And servants are trying to come and let them know what's going on. Watch what happens, Minister Hampton. The Bible says, all of a sudden, the four winds come from the wilderness. <laughs> Where did those four winds come from? The wilderness. Wind represents pneuma. Pneuma represents spirit. Wilderness represents dryness, famine, death. Four spirits connected to the spirit of death comes, watch this, and blows down the house in which the sons and the daughters are feasting in. But go back and read it. Guess who dies in the house? Only the young men. The daughters didn't die. The daughters was in the house too. But the daughters didn't die. Why? Because the devil was after his seed. The whole trip the whole trip, the devil was only after Job's ability to reproduce, Job's ability to continue harvest, Job's ability to have strength. The sons represents Job's strength. The Bible says he had made his, he made his substance great in the earth. Watch this. If I'm dead, Brother Doug, and my sons die, my name is gone in the earth. I no longer have influence. It's like I was never here. Well, he got daughters. My daughters don't carry my name. My daughters don't carry the inheritance. Oh, y'all quiet now. They don't carry the strip. So now here it is again. I got to show you this. When spiritual attack came, when the hedge was removed, it was all about, watch this, the investments and the inheritance. Y'all ain't never looked at Job like that. The entire spiritual attack that Job that was released against Job was all about his investments and his inheritance. He said, let me touch his prosperity. Let me touch, amen, his legacy. And any, good, any man with sense will begin to curse God. That's what he said. Men, men don't want nothing to do with God when they broke. Y'all quiet now. That's why it's hard for you to bring a, a man to church when he broke. If he got some money, he may be willing to come. He feel good about himself. Man ain't got no money, I won't be coming to church, especially at offering time. Why, why they got to ask for money? I'm just saying. I'm, I'm just trying to figure this out. Why they got to ask for money? Well, how much money are you about to give him, B? B, B, don't be giving that man all, all that money. You just feel like giving a man money? You give me that money, B. Bam, I'm giving it to God. I'm your God. <laughs> Y'all don't want to preach with me up in here, up in here in West Jackson. Huh? When a man's straight, he turn around and say, hey, babe, put that in the offering. Put that in the offering. Okay, go ahead and give Rev a little that there. Let him know it's from us. Get that there to Rev. Let him know that's from us. You know what I'm saying? Let him know that's from the Williams. Yeah, the Lord is good. No, let him lose all he have. This is how you know when your hedge is being removed. Everything you have is in trouble. Man, y'all don't want to preach with me. Sometimes the devil will have you panicking over a simple attack. But there's a difference between a simple attack 
and God removing all your protection. Most of our attacks, Minister Hope, happen with our angels present, which means victory is always guaranteed. What happens when God gives the angels the night off? Oh, sure. What happens when God, oh, y'all quiet. You just left church. You just made the sacrifice. And on your way home, you trying to give your angels charge, and they already got a charge. You can't go home with him today. You can't go home with her today. Why? Because it's her time to be tested. And she thought she was tested why the angels was present. She has no idea what it's like to be tested with no hedge. You thought you were going through when God was still there working for you. What happens when God moves against you? I know what you're thinking. God would not move against me. What kind of theology is that? But if you go to Job, the second chapter, God has a second conversation with Satan. And in that second conversation with Satan, he says, have you considered Job even after you bankrupt him? Even after death has hit his lineage? Y'all quiet now. And he still maintains integrity, solidness, solidarity. He's unmoved. Can you stay unmoved when God moves against you? Oh, y'all quiet now. I know, I know. I'm almost done already. Can you stay unmoved when God, I said God, go back and read it. The Bible says, Job says, have you considered my servant Job? He maintains his integrity even though you made me move against him without God testified, I didn't even have a reason to move against him. He was faithful. He was making sacrifices. He didn't miss a service. She was a worshiper. She loved God. She was doing everything God told her to do. Y'all quiet now, yet death still found a house. Uh, yet tragedy still finds the house. Uh, yet tragedy still finds the children. Uh, yet the money still won't get right. Uh, yet the business is still suffering. And God said, you're trying to figure out what caused it. He said, I caused it. Oh, y'all quiet now. God won't even let the devil get glory in your tragedy. I said God won't even let the devil get glory in your tragedy. You talk about the devil did it, the devil did it. God said, no, I did it. I allowed it. I allowed it. Why would you do something like that, God? What did I do? Really, you didn't do anything. You know how you were shouting, it was my time. It's my turn. It's just your time. It's just your turn. Give me a Bible. Solomon said, time and chance. Happening to us. Oh, I felt God on that. Lift your hands. Somebody say this with me. God, help me not to move. Even if you move against me. Ooh, that's the balance. Somebody say it again. God, help me not to move. Even if you move against me. Hold on, son. Because somebody's trying to wrestle. Why? But Bishop, this don't make no sense. This don't make no sense. Because, no, I don't make sense. Because our ways are not his ways. And our thoughts are not his thoughts. As high as the heavens are from the earth, as far as east is from the west, some things you can't figure out. Some things you just trust God. I'm a man who believes in always having an answer. So here's the answer. Trust God. Why did he do it? He has a reason. 
even if I don't understand it, he has a reason. Now, somebody might say, but that don't justify him killing his children. Well, oh, I'm about to get in trouble now. Well, the Bible said Job was perfect and upright. He didn't say his children. Job was making sacrifices for his grown children. His grown children should have been making sacrifices. If he was old enough to have a house, he was old enough to have a sacrifice. Why would God kill a man's children? You would serve a God like that. You got to understand the children were of age of accountability. But, he, but why would God blow on his stuff? Because God wants to make sure that he got your heart and not the stuff. That's why, that's why Job say, shall I receive good? Yeah, sure. He knew that his good came from the Lord. He understood that the Lord is the one who gave it. And the Lord can be the one to take it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. If God bless my business today and tomorrow my business falls, I still give God the glory for the opportunity of being trusted to have my own business. How do you know if the hedge is being moved? It's hitting your family. It's hitting your house. It's hitting everything connected to you. It's hitting the business. It's hitting the money. And it's amazing that when the devil decided to try and wreck Job's fate, he started with the money. He started trying to cripple everything Job put his hands to financially. Why? Because the hedge represents the fun. Oh, y'all quiet now. One definition for the word hedge is boundaries. I'm almost done, y'all. But another definition for the word hedge, watch this, is contract. A contract for that legally protects assets. <laughs> the hedge protects the assets in case of loss or damages. And as long as I don't violate the policies of the contract, the one who I'm in covenant, I feel like preaching now. The one I'm in covenant with is responsible for everything that's connected to the contract. So he all quiet now. So this is why at the end of his sister Lona, amen, God had to come back and restore back to Job everything he lost. And he gave him double. Why? Because Job didn't have a cause or gave God a reason for him to lose his assets. Assets. Amen. That was on the one who was in charge of the fund. So how I'm going to suffer loss if I didn't do anything to hurt the contract. So God knowing that he's not a man that he should lie. Nor the son of man that he had need to repent. He has to go back and protect or restore everything that was under the hedge. As long as you're in covenant, as long as you're in covenant, God is responsible for everything that pertains to you. I don't know if y'all got that. As long as I'm in covenant with God, my money belongs to God. My business, y'all quiet. If you, yeah, 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 and you can say that if you operating in covenant. You know, you know, I tied off the business. I tied, y'all quiet now. I'm in covenant. I'm, I got a contract. Every paycheck, something goes into my hedge fund. Every time I get an increase, something goes into my hedge fund. Every time God blesses my life, something goes into my hedge fund. If I can get a little extra boost, something extra going. Uh, into my hands for, and just in case uh, I catch a fire uh, just in case uh, the enemy comes in like a flood uh, I got flood protection uh, uh, I got flood protection uh, against the flood of the enemy uh, I got fire protection against the fiery darts of the enemy can you say it say it 
So I want you to get this in your spirit today. Whether I hoop it, whether I tell it, whether I yell it, no matter how you get it, I want you to get it. So last night, oh, sha. Last night about, in fact, I'm going to tell you the exact time. Last night, I was, I was closing up my session at the gym. And I got a phone call from one of the saints. And when she gave me the phone call, she said, Bishop, and she normally don't call me first. She'll normally call first lady. But about 12, 12, first lady may answer. She may not answer. So she called me and she said, Bishop, I just want you to know that we're standing on the outside of our house because the house is filled with smoke. And she said, Bishop, I really don't know what's going on. I think the house is on fire. Now, this, this here huh, has come on the heels huh, of her mama having to have emergency surgery, huh, of her daughter having to have uh, emergency surgery after her husband huh, is in the hospital, was fighting for her life. Y'all quiet now. And then all of a sudden, huh, seemed like the house on fire. But she called me huh, at exactly 12 12. Huh? I got the text message to prove it. Huh? 12 12 I heard the Lord say I'm gonna give a devil turn me up a little bit he said I'm gonna give a devil for all of our trouble because the enemy attacked her marriage the enemy attacked the children the enemy attacked her money the enemy attacked the house now God told me to tell you 12, 12, new floors, new foundation, new floors, same vessel, new anointing, same vessel, new glory, same power, new power, say it. I can't get new glory. Until I go through my test, I can't get new glory. Until I go through it, I go. on the other side of the testing, there's a brand new blessing. Can you say it? Twelve, 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 twelve. New foundation, double for your trouble. New foundation, double for your trouble. I said, God, what is going on? He said, she asked me for new glory. She said, she told me, Lord, I don't want to go back to where I struggle with money. Yeah, I, and she watching. I know she watching. I said, Lord, I don't want to go back uh, to those same things. And the only way God uh, can get you to never go back uh, it's to call y'all quiet now. It's to teach you a lesson. Oh, now I know. Now I know my Redeemer lives. Oh, now I know. Now I know I got a Redeemer. He brought me back. Yeah. He brought me back. Can you say it? Yeah? Papa's trailer say, I went to the same Usha Nikatadamoho. So I went to the same place expecting the same thing. He said, but when I got there, the outside looked the same, but the inside had completely been renovated. And she said, the first thing I noticed was new floors. You don't need new walls if you got the same foundation. Ah, sometime in order for, see, it's easy to put up new walls. It's hard to get a new foundation. Because in order to get a new foundation, God got to test some stuff up. Tear up, God. Tear up whatever you got to tear up. Lord, I trust you. Lord, I believe you. Lord, I'm going on. I'll maintain my integrity. I'll maintain.
maintain uh, my confidence in you. Uh, I'll maintain uh, my faith in you. You got to hold on to heaven when God moves the hedge. <sighs> what is he talking about? He maintaining. That means there's something he won't let go of. Even though everything around him is sifting, falling apart, move. He said, I got something I'm holding on to and I won't let go. What are you holding on to? Ooh, why your foundation has been, that's crazy. What do I hold on to? And the floor is disappearing. I'm holding on to heaven because the walls are changed, the floors are changed, but the heavens ain't changing. It's firm. <laughs> it's solid. Y'all, if it can hold the stars and the sun and the moon, surely it can hold me. This, this Job was going through. Finally, the devil comes back. Keep playing something soft. The devil comes back and say, yeah, go ahead and let me touch his body. Skin for skin. In other words, maybe he was a little bit deeper than I thought. Okay. The money didn't have him. Yeah. But let me touch this. Let me touch his body. Play something softly, son. Let me touch his body. I, I touch his body. I get him sick enough. Huh? Surely, surely he'll let go then. Let, let him get that report. Yeah. His kidneys, heart, cancer. Let me get that that word of a sakara moko shake. Here they be all sala la mato la mako sete. Anybody anybody had to go through where where you're going through family, finances, then physically. Huh? Man, you talking about a storm. You talking about a heat wave. Word of baba shatara it get hot enough, you don't want to go to work. It get hot enough, you if it's you don't even want to be in your own house. It get hot enough, heat run you out your own house. You like it's too hot to work. It's too hot to be in this house, huh? He say skin for skin. Let me touch his body. Let me touch his body. You know I've been pastoring now this work. I'm in my 10th year, nine years. And I've seen things that I have to I'll be honest. I sit back and go, why you let that happen to her, God? I'm quiet. Can I be honest? I've seen them coming, and I'm like, but he got a family. He's faithful, God. And the Lord just told me through this message, I got to prove him. I got to prove her. Are you listening to me? I got to test him. And those, and those tests when the angels are around, that ain't working no more. They already know all they got to do is give charge to the angels. That ain't working no more. What about city? They know all they got to do is call affairs, get in prayer. That's over. That devil got to go. They understand they got power with God. And if I tell hell, get up off me in Jesus' name, it got to go. For the last two nights, can I just be honest? I couldn't sleep last night. I couldn't sleep the last night. And I, I don't spook easy. I, I slept with my gun last night and the night before. I literally felt something come touch me on my, not last night, but the night before, come touch me on my shoulder while I was asleep. I woke all the way up. I'm like, baby, who you I thought it was a late trail. I'm like, don't be playing with me. Stop. I woke up, wasn't nothing there, but I could feel this tall, dark presence. Y'all, see, church folk don't like talking like that. I don't know why we spiritual and y'all scared to talk about spiritual stuff. I literally, I wouldn't lie. God, no, I wouldn't lie. I thought I was tripping. <laughs> Like, I know I don't smoke. I don't drink. <laughs> I'm good. So what's going on in here? 
I turned the lights back on. Reached under that mattress, took the full five from under the mattress, put it on the pillow. Glory be to God. I don't know what I'm going to do with that full five. You can't kill spirits. <laughs> but that thing physically touched me. You touch me, I'm going to touch you back. Sideways, old dog. Minister society. <laughs> huh? It touched me, sister. And I shut up. I didn't get it the night before, so I believe, you know what God let it do? Come back last night. In my room again. Soon as I finished studying, turn the TV off, turn off all lights, try to go to sleep, I can feel that thing. In my room. And I'm thinking to myself, you already know. You don't have permission to be in here. What if he said, but I do. Are you sure your hedge is in place? What if God gave him permission this time to touch you? Oh, y'all quiet. You got to have the balance. That's what Noel Jones say. We went for years and years teaching people about prosperity. Teaching them about the blessing. We didn't teach them about the testing. We did not prepare the church for spiritual warfare. No, because spiritual warfare is this joker will allow, God will allow this joker to send you into bankruptcy. God will allow this joker to orchestrate the loss of your home, your mortgage soon as you lose the job. Y'all quiet now. And a job you used to have favor on, all of a sudden, every, all hell is broken out. Why did all hell break out? Because hell had permission to break out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But God told me, Trailer, you tell them that's been going through the last 30 days. That the number 30 represents divine authority. And today, you're quiet now. I'm about to restore the authority back to the people of God. You was wondering why you couldn't remove the devil. It's because he had permission to be there. You was wondering why you couldn't uproot him. Huh? It's because he had permission to be there. But God told me today, uh, he's giving you your authority back uh, to rebuke what refused to leave. Uh, to cancel. To cancel what came to control. To uproot what tried to dethrone you. I caught the message. 630, 12, 12. Number six represents glory. Number 30 represents divine authority. Number 12 represents foundation. 12 twice was double that foundation. Glory, divine authority, and new foundations. I got a phone call from a sister who is being attacked in every area she can be attacked. But before the month started, God told me to tell her, prophesy that this won't drain me. Not knowing what was about to come. I stood there over and over again, over and over again. And some of y'all were gone because it was probably about two in the afternoon when we were standing there. I said, say, this won't drain me. I said, this won't drain me. I said, say it again. This won't drain me. I said, say it again. This won't drain me. And we probably said that about eight times. This won't drain me. This won't drain me. This won't drain me. This won't drain me. And within a week's time, not even a week's time, husband in the hospital, sister, daughter in the hospital. Y'all quiet now. Mama in the hospital. Your finances under attack. House smoked out last night. She called me at 12, 12. She said, Bishop. As soon as she said, soon out the phone, I looked at the time and God told me, it is finished. Are you listening to me? Say new floors. Say new walls. 
Say new glory. Say new power. Say I'll take that. Say I'll take that. 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 It's over. Minister Isaiah, I didn't get a chance to read the last scripture, but the Bible says that Job got everything back. Watch this. It said that he lived another 140 years. Say 140. And he would be blessed for another four generations. Say four generations. The number 40 represents judgment and tests. The number four represents full circle. Forty years around the mountain. Full circle. Every test brings you full circle. If you pass the test, you get an elevation. For everybody who held on to your faith these last, the, this last month, I hear God saying, elevation. New glory. New power. This was supposed to take you out. This was supposed to take you out. This was supposed to get your faith. Out of my soul. You were supposed to curse God and quit. You were supposed to say, this thing don't work for me. I tried this. This thing ain't working for me. Even your closest confidant said, why you keep trusting God? Curse God and die. But where else I'm going to go? He have the words to eternal life. Naked I came in this church. I came to God with nothing. And I'm going to hold on to my faith. If he take everything else from me. I know how it is to have nothing. And be without God. At least if I'm not going to have nothing. I'm going to keep going. strength. I came from weakness. I didn't come from prosperity. I came from poverty. I know what it is to not have nothing and be without God. I'm not scared to lose nothing but God. You can take this whole world. Give me Jesus. Oh, I said you can take the whole world. Just leave me Jesus. Huh? Leave me, Jesus. Huh? Naked I came in. Naked I'm going to go out. Leave me, Jesus. Yes. Yes, Lord, I'll say that. Where? Where I promise you this. God said, I'm building you a new flow. This season was meant to take you out. You know, I hear people say, trials come to make me strong. Uh -uh. The devil came to take me out. If I survive it, I'm stronger. 
If I overcome it, I'm stronger. But he only gets a short season, Minister Hope. Huh? Then when the, then, then all of a sudden God stands up and say, that's enough. Because you caused me to move against her without a cause. It's enough, Coleman. You didn't do nothing. Y'all quiet now. I wish I had some people. I didn't do nothing to be quiet, but I was serving God. I was just doing what God called me to do with all this. Job say, would you break a leaf that's green? Would you break a leaf that's driven? Far, far from you, God. I'm not dry. I'm not destitute. I'm not trying to go back. I come from strength. If you could survive it, it's one thing. If you can overcome it, it's another. But I hear God saying, six, the six month glory, this 30th day, divine authority. As of 12 12, when I got that phone call, God, I felt like the Holy Ghost told me that. I smiled. He said, It is over. Huh? And specifically for Sister Huddleston, I hear the Lord saying, there's a reward for her holding on to her faith. There's a reward for her not giving up. Huh? Glory be to God. I said, glory be to God. Lift your hands. We're going home. I don't know if you know this. Great is your mercy towards me. Your loving kindness towards me. How da ba ho shika da 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 mo. Your tender mercies I see day after day forever. You're always providing for me. Great is your mercy towards me. Great is your grace. Great is your mercy towards me. Your loving kindness. Towards me, your tender mercies I see day after day forever faithful towards me. You're always providing for me. Great is your mercy yes Lord everybody who can get a $12 seed in your hand $12 seed 12 12 12, 12. hold it big that's not a lot of money it's not about the money it's about the principle 12 if you feel God telling you to do double do 24 12 12 12 get a seed of a 12 12 24 somebody might want to do 36 say they be usher if you have a card and your name is Katrina or Katarina Lyons, we have your card here, Lyons. Come get it from Minister Levy. That's your right there. Your loving kind. $12 seed is your foundation seed. If you can do 24, 36, 48, whatever the Lord tell you, 60, 144, whatever the Lord tell you, but at least $12 seed. I don't believe in coincidences because the word coincidence is not in my Bible. I don't believe in coincidences. The word coincidence is not in the Bible. I want you to get a twelve out of seed. You come lay it on the altar or you come swipe it. I want you to sow into this atmosphere. I want you to sow into this atmosphere. New floors. That's prophetic. That was good. New floors.
Providence Trailer said, Providence Trailer said she's so much in agreement with that word, most of y'all don't know, but she had an assignment to wear black for the entire month. She said when she woke up this morning to get dressed, the Lord told her, go ahead and wear your colors because it's over. I didn't even talk to her. In fact, I didn't see her until I got here. I didn't see her. I was asleep. She leave out earlier than me, so I didn't see her. So that's a confirmation. She said when she got dressed this morning, the Lord told her, it's over. The assignment was over. That's glory on that, y'all. That's glory on that. Oh, if you give me my card, just the line. If not, great is your grace. If you want to give, if you want to give by text 601-202-4365, 601-202-4365, type I give in all caps. Type I give. I believe you're sowing into a new foundation as you go into the month of July. I believe July is going to be a, a amen, an upgrade month. Amen. To finish this year strong. God told me 2019 would be a preparation year for 2020. Don't panic. Prepare. For next year will be the year of clear vision. The year of clarity. The year of clear vision. Lift your hands, man of God. Amen. Can you, can you lift your hands? Let me just pray for you. Amen. Father, I thank you even now for the rich anointing that's on this man of God. Whatever capacity in which he serves the kingdom, I pray a double blessing upon his life. May favor go before him. May his legacy be rich. May his legacy be rich. Whatever he's poured out over the years, even that which flows through the veins of his seed, May it be rich, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. It's my prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. There's a rich oil on you. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. You got another card swiper? We only got one. We may need two. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Y'all ought to just enjoy this atmosphere. We're about to go home. You ought to just worship in this atmosphere. Jesus. Jesus. Mm, Jesus, you be lifted. Mm. Jesus, you be lifted. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Be lifted higher. Be lifted higher. Oh, yes, Lord.